Hey friends, thank you so much for tuning in this week. My name is George Gianaris, and I am here to teach you how to eat healthy, save money, and cook like a pro. I'm super excited about this week's episode because I rarely have the opportunity to experiment the way I want to, like in a technical way. Running a restaurant and being a chef at that restaurant and this YouTube channel really kind of takes up all of my time. Today, I'm excited because I want to cook with beer. I'm the type of guy who likes to tell a story. I like it so much that I published two books. If you want to find out about them, the link to them is down below in the description. But I understand that your time is extremely precious and I don't want to take it up. If you're interested in finding out something about this video, which beer is the best to cook with, what the recipes are, there's a video chapter time code in the description down below. Just click on that link. Want to find out which beer is best to cook with? In the time code. Want to see a recipe that I cooked on the show? in the time code. Want to find out about eternity, what your life is all about, and if it has any significance? Maybe in another episode. So what pray tell is this little gadget, you may ask? This is called the Beer Maker. It's an automatic brewing system. I'm currently making my first batch of beer, so I don't have an episode ready for you, but if you tune in to this channel, you'll find out more about whether this thing is worth buying and if it makes a decent beer. Growing up on the east end of Long Island, I am surrounded by wineries. As a matter of fact, there are 50 boutique wineries in this region. They're really, really small. Some of them are only a couple acres, some of them are as big as 200 acres, which is, compared to Napa, which I haven't been, or California, those are super, super tiny. In the 1970s, we saw the first winery come to the North Fork of Long Island, and then they popped up all over the place, and along with them came breweries, great breweries. So I went to North Fork Brewing Company and I visited my friend Ian. Ian Van Borgendien, he's one of the co-owners of North Fork Brewing Company. I carry his beer at my restaurant, but this isn't a paid promotion. It's more about how much I love local beer, especially his beer. First of all, can we take our masks off? We're six feet apart, so we're good. Let's, yeah. and I want to do that, but. How long have you been in this area? So our grand opening was June 29th, uh, 2018. So that's an important day in our book. Since then, we've uh, just been trying to maximize our space, really create a great local product that we think is indicative of the North Fork. But you put your money where your mouth is. I mean, you're not just based on the North Fork uh, of Long Island. You literally grow your own hops. So I was born and raised on the North Fork. My family has are multi-generational farmers. They've always operated greenhouse and done cut flowers. But I had some cousins who were very interested in hop farming and they planted hops and, and planted a whole yard and, and set up this really great one acre hop yard. My business partner, Peter, Peter had a lot of experience already brewing up in New Hampshire and he wanted to bring that down here and start a brewery. And so I was already um, working as a chemist and I had already uh, been sort of helping out at the hop farm and had this big interest in getting into beer full time. I'm glad you did. And you don't see younger generations moving back to their hometowns and establishing businesses, especially out here because it's such a seasonal area. Now, I just came back from Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and one of the things that I love besides skiing is actually being out west so I can have access to some of the microbreweries out there. Now, I've had a lot of local beers, like Greenport Harbor puts out great beers. I love them. I've been doing business with them forever. And there's a lot of smaller breweries that are popping up on the north, like Mustache Brewery. I mean, that guy's the most, one of the most creative brewers I've ever met. He just goes all out and comes up with these unbelievable brews. Not that you don't, but his, his claim to fame is some of the more uh, creative beers that he's come up with, and I love them. Um, but I just, you know, I'm allowed to have a favorite, and you are my favorite. I don't want to try to flatter you. I'm also here for very selfish reasons. I have to be quite honest with you. Uh, I've cooked with wine my whole life, and I've dabbled with beer. I, use a, I make a beer batter when I do like a fried cod, and I have cooked beer and with like bratwurst and stuff like that. But I've never really experimented to see what I can do with beer in my food. Mm -hmm. What does it taste like when it's cooked down? Have you ever cooked with any beer? Yeah, my wife and I actually the other day just, um, mainly my wife, she's a better cook than I am, but she really wanted to make chicken franchise. And really? Yeah. With beer? Yeah. Cool. And, and so she substituted the white wine portion for one of our IPAs, one of our double IPAs, which I was actually almost a little skeptical of. I, I said, are you sure? I'm not quite sure. And she thought, no, no, I think it's got this wonderful orange character to it and maybe it'll be a nice substitute for a white wine. And it ended up being a very unique but very delicious, I, I thought very delicious oh, that's great. dish of chicken fan cheese. Well, I'm gonna play around with your beers. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, it's a little early to taste, but I've tasted most of them. 
I'm going to walk away with a few of your selections and we're going to, I'll let you know how it works out. I'm, and hopefully over time I'll be able to come up with a flavor profile that I could create some interesting recipes with and maybe eventually make my own, not for drinking purposes though. Mm -hmm. See what happens when you cook with it. So it'll be like an overtime experimentation that I'm really excited to try out. Juan Sepulveda, he's the winemaker from Laurel Lake Vineyards. And not because he's a friend of mine, not because he's a local guy, he makes some outstanding, outstanding wine. And I was curious to find out if it really made a difference what type of wine you used when you cooked. I did a video for that and the link is up top and in the description down below. It turns out that there really is a significant difference to the wine that you use in your cooking. Can you use beer in place of where some recipes call for wine and which beer would you use? So I'm gonna heat up these beers and evaporate the alcohol, see what kind of flavor comes out. Then I'm gonna reduce these beers and see what kind of flavor comes out then. And based on that, I'm gonna come up with a recipe today and we'll see how these beers fare in food. All right, folks, here's our beer roundup starting from lightest to heaviest. Our first beer is from Greenport Harbor. It's called Velvet Sea Ale. It's a lighter lager, smooth, a little floral, very delicious, very, very drinkable. Then we have Run the Juice from North Fork Brewing Company. It's a little stronger. It's more like a New England IPA, not too hoppy. Then we got Pierce the Ale, again, North Fork Brewing Company. It's more like a West Coast IPA. It's a little more hoppy than Run the Juice, a little stronger in their flavor. Here's an interesting one. This is one is sour beer from North Fork Brewing Company. It's called Back to the Lacto. I'm really curious to see what this happens, what happens to this when you cook it down. Very curious about that. And this one here is a collaborative beer. It's called Collateral Damage, again, from North Fork Brewing Company. It's more like a traditional IPA, but all the hops that are in it are farmed from this region on the North Fork of Long Island. It's pretty cool. Then here we got uh, a stout from North Fork Brewing Company called Dark Side of the Maple. It's got hints of maple syrup in the flavor. Again, very drinkable, very delicious. And finally, we have this big, big bomb from Mustache Brewery. Again, very uh, local brewery. It's called Blueberry and Ginger. It's a Belgian-style triple, very bold, with a massive alcohol content of 10.3%. <laughs> So the Mustache Brewing Company beer, it smells like Christmas in here. I'm smelling like plums and apricots. It's definitely so pungent. I can imagine that being so delicious in like a sour braten or just like a, even a pot roast and maybe in a, cooked in an instant pot or a pressure cooker. Uh, that's, I'm excited about that one. All right, let's give these a taste, see how they did. I'm gonna start off with the less concentrated version and then go to the heavier one of each beer and, and see how they fare. When you boil off all of these beers, they basically taste like the beer flat, which is unique. If you were to do this with wine, the flavor of the wine would change instantly, but each beer kind of tasted like it did when you drank it out of the can, obviously flat. And here's another interesting thing. When you concentrated the boil, you reduced it, they tasted like a super concentrated version of the beer. The flavor really didn't change. Cooking the beer didn't really alter it in such a dramatic way. But the great thing is that it's going to be very indicative of what the beer tastes like when you're drinking it. Here's my favorites. This blueberry ginger cooked down, this was unbelievable. This tasted like a Christmas in a can. Unbelievable. The darker maple tasted very mapley, very syrupy. Hints of coffee. The concentrated version, very strong. I'd be a little careful about cooking that down in my food. This sour one was almost too sour when it was cooked down. Oh my God, it's like, it's like citric acid, it's so strong. I'm almost thinking that I would cook that with fish. I may even just boil a lobster in this. It gives it such a great, strong, lemony flavor. Maybe a crab boil. Awesome. So already, like, my creative juices are flowing here. The one that I dislike the most, and the one I probably would never cook with, is the Collateral Damage. It was extremely hoppy, and that really would not... I can't think of a dish that would make that... I would not want to cook with that. It's so strong, it's so bitter, it's got such powerful aromatic. Like the concentrated version, 
I don't know. I don't know what I would cook with that, but I would definitely be cooking with these two. And this one, I would just maybe... I wouldn't cook with this. This is just too light. It didn't really do anything for the flavor. Let's see these. This was really nice and mild. Okay, so I'm steering away from these beers here, these for cooking. These three, the hop in it, mm, I don't know. I don't think I could come up with a dish, not off the top of my head, that would really be enhanced by the hops and, and, and the, the bitterness of the hops, the strong, pungent flavors of the hops in this dish. I mean, if you have any suggestions, leave them down below. Maybe you've cooked with stuff before, uh, hoppy beers. Um, I would avoid a hoppy beer. So I'm going to show you two recipes right now that I think are really going to be awesome with these beers. It's rare that you see guys go out or girls go out to school, get a full education to come back and contribute to the community by developing their business in their hometown. And I'm here today with a really good family friend of mine. This is Joey Lasoe, Joe Lasoe. Uh, Joe j did just that. Uh, he went and got his college degree, he, he, but his heart and passion is in the outdoors. So Joe here in the summertime is a captain, he charters boats, and in the wintertime he is a avid hunter. That's true, right Joe? Mm -hmm. Introduce yourself. Hi, hi, I'm Joe, <laughs> as, uh, as George here mentioned. Uh, yeah, like he said, I went to school upstate New York, uh, graduated my bachelor's degree in business analytics. Um, and, you know, came home, found a job working on a fishing boat, uh, captain of a fishing boat, I should say, and in the off season, you know, fishing's kind of slow in the winter, and like you said, big outdoors guy, so I deer hunt, and, you know, I fell in love with just butchering my own deer, and, uh, you know, making a lot of tasty meals with, you know, the deer that I harvest. So. But, but you're making a business out of it, right? You're actually butchering people's, uh, yeah. harvest, right? So that kind of turned into, you know, me doing it for myself, and said, wow, maybe others, you know, might enjoy this. As much as I do, you know, they can make, you know, not a lot of people make sausage. Yeah, by so. the way, Joe is supplying us the sausage for one of my dishes. I'm going to cook this sausage up in two ways, Joe. The first way is I'm going to boil it in the beer. The second way is I'm going to saute it in the, uh, on the pan and then finish it with beer so it'll kind of almost like caramelize. And I'm also going to do two with nothing. Joe is going to be my taste tester today. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to taste this, uh, this one dish that we're going to do with the actual deer meat that he harvested and turned into sausage. Yes. And just something you need to understand. I'm a hunter myself, a spear fisherman. We never, ever harvest animals for sport. We eat everything that we catch. And that's the, we're both on the same page with that. <laughs> So when I put this together, I uh, basically felt that with any kind of sausage, the, the stout would go well with it. So this one is just sautéed in olive oil. They both sautéed in olive oil. And this one has a reduction of the dark side of the maple from Northfolk Brewing Company. I want you to taste both, and I want you to tell me which one you think is better. So it's cooked perfectly. That's good. It is cooked perfectly. It's you. I'll trade you. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> That's delicious on its own. It is very good. Try this one with the beer in it. Oh. Good. Oh yeah. Another level. Mm -hmm. What do you think of it? It's a lot more rich. Right? The beer. Very rich. Mm -hmm. You can taste almost a little bit of that maple. Kind of blends very nicely with the seasoning they use in that sausage, it's delicious. Our sausage is boiling here, and I have this organic raw sauerkraut. I'm gonna just add some to the normal boiling water and add some to the beer, and let's see if the beer goes well with the sauerkraut. I don't really think that the beer is gonna be very good in the sauerkraut. I'm not I, sure. You were saying that as we were cooking it. I think it's going to be a little too strong, but let me just give it a try okay. without the sausage first. It's a little bitter, right? It is a little bitter. Yeah. So even though that was a stout, wasn't very hoppy, you could taste the bitterness come through in the sauerkraut. So it's almost like an aftertaste. It is. I wonder if if I use a a very plain ale, uh, if it would have made a difference, but 
I wouldn't do that. I'm gonna try this sausage without the sauerkraut and see if it uh, boiling and beer made a difference. Oh, totally. It just takes it to a completely different level. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, oh, it is a little bitter. The okay. beer taste kind of sneaks up on you there. It does. At the end, you could taste the beer. So it's surprising how when we put this beer on it as a reduction, it wasn't bitter at all. It's not bad. I does just it feel burn off more, you think? It kind of... I don't know. I know as a reduction, it was off the charts. Mm -hmm. That was the better salsa, but here, I think almost... The plain one is better. Plain one's better. Mm -hmm. Maybe because there was a lot of fat in the, in the pan and the, the drippings from the sausage mellowed out the beer, but boiling the sausage in the beer, boiling the sauerkraut in the beer, mm, not the greatest solution. But this was really delicious, Joe. It Thank was. you for making that yeah, for me. Really it. appreciate it. That was awesome. Good Absolutely. luck with that. Keep, keep doing what you're Thank doing, you. man. Yeah. It's awesome. I was so enamored by the flavor of this blueberry ginger beer that I thought I could make a really nice beef stroganoff style beef. So I'm gonna be using an inexpensive chuck blade steak. And the thing about that particular steak is it's not terribly soft. I'm just gonna season this very simply using my new favorite salt, this Redmond salt. Oh, so glad you guys turned me on to it. Thank you for your comments. I'm just gonna gently put a little salt on that. It's kind of thin, so I don't think I need to season both sides. This gets dredged in flour. I'm, I'm gonna use a gluten-free flour. Uh, I'm not gonna use regular flour, but you know, regular flour works fine if you're into that. The blueberry and ginger in here almost tastes a little bit like, like plums. So good. Mm. So rich. It's like a winter dish, you know, it kind of sticks to your bones like over egg noodles. Oh. If I had a chance to do it all over again, I would probably add some star anise to it. Really bring out that almost like Christmas-like flavor. Probably put a touch more spice, a little bit of heat to it. It's outstanding. What do I want you to get out of this? I want you to not be afraid to experiment. Pick up some local craft beer, do a seafood boil with it, mess around with the flavor profile of the beers that you taste, add it to your recipes. And hopefully, if this thing works out, I'll be making my own beer and reviewing this beer maker in a future episode. Please leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you again soon.